From the geocache site, climb the hill to look out over Lake Winnipeg. This is the same view you would have had of the water at the edge of the Ice Age era Lake Agassiz. This location was called Belair Moraine, a hill-shaped landform deposited here by glacial activity. The melting of the glacier that covered a large portion of Manitoba created a lake that covered much of the province. Geologist Warren Upham dubbed it Lake Agassiz after American scientist Louis Agassiz in 1879. When the lake started to melt, the southwestern corner of the province was the first to be exposed. When an eastern outlet opened, Agassiz drained rapidly, probably with catastrophic results. As much as 3,000 cubic kilometers of water, seven times the volume of Lake Erie, coursed into the Superior Basin in just a few weeks. From this point, Lake Agassiz continued to drain to the north, creating a series of beaches which bear the names of local towns, Macaulayville, The Paw, Lower Paw, and Gimli. A process known as isostatic rebound sped up the emptying of Lake Agassiz into Hudson Bay. As the ice and water that had compressed the Earth's crust was removed, the land returned to its pre-glacial elevation. When the process was complete, only Lakes Winnipeg, Winnipegosis, and Manitoba's other Great Lakes remained as vestiges of their glacial forerunner. The ridges near the beaches hindered the drainage of water to the lakes in the east, forming extensive bogs and sloughs behind them, and making east-west travel difficult. At the same time, however, the well-drained beaches served as natural north-south migration corridors. 19th century explorers such as Henry Hine noted that these pitching tracks were often the only roads in the low-lying country of southern Manitoba. The beaches also served as lookout stations for indigenous hunters to spot approaching game. The ridges provided strategic locations for camps as they traversed the resource areas of the western grasslands and eastern streams and forests. <laughs>